hello again and welcome to another video in this video I'm going to case swap this HP Prodesk G1 PC into this calling ATX case I'm also going to use a normal ATX power supply with an adapter I'm going to show the drawbacks of the case swap and PSU upgrade since unfortunately this PC doesn't like those at all. I'm also going to show some gaming benchmarks I run on this PC. After opening the side panel of the HP 600 G1 PC, the first thing I did was to take out the HDD. I'll use an SSD for the boot drive but this HDD will do as a game drive it's half a terabyte so it should be enough for like two games nowadays at least next we need to disconnect all the cables from the motherboard and take out the screws holding it in the case after the motherboard screws, which are placed according to the Micro ATX standard, we also need to take the CPU cooler out, because it is mounted to the case through the motherboard. I decided to replace the thermal paste for the CPU, since I was taking the cooler out anyway. And in my case I needed to take the PSU off, because the fan was on the way. Because the cooler was mounted straight to the case originally, we need some nuts to hold it in place in the new ATX case. I found these UNC nuts locally, but I didn't end up using them, because I thought they might dig into the motherboard. Instead I got some normal UNC nuts from eBay, which worked perfectly. After cleaning the CPU and the CPU cooler with an alcohol pad and applying some new GD900 thermal paste, I installed the CPU cooler on its place and put the nuts on the underside of the board and tightened all the CPU cooler screws. After carefully unscrewing all the thumb screws holding the glass in place, it was time to prepare the new case for transferring the board. As a first thing I needed to put some standoffs on the correct places for the micro ATX board. Since this case was bought as a customer return, somebody had put some of the standoffs on incorrectly and destroyed some of the threads, but I got enough standoffs there so that I could safely mount the motherboard inside the case. I mounted the motherboard onto the standoffs I had just installed and after that I did some cable management by routing all the cables through the back and I plugged in the HD audio cable and the USB 2 cable which are standard. For the USB 3 we need to use this very flexible adapter, since otherwise the graphics card would interfere with the USB 3 cable installation. Preparing for the graphics card installation, I took out one PCIe slot cover, which are break-off covers like in all cheaper cases. Also before installing the graphics card, I put in the SATA cables. I used a flat 90 degree SATA cable so that the card 
wouldn't hit the cables. I installed an SSD on one of the two and a half inch drive mounting points and then I connected the USB 3.0 cable to the extender I connected to the motherboard earlier. I attached the HDD onto the bracket that came with the case and installed a 500 watt standard ATX PSU. At this point I realized I should have passed the CPU power cable through before installing the motherboard but I used an extender and got it to reach the CPU power socket on the motherboard. It doesn't look nice at all with the extender cable hanging above the board but I knew already at this point that I wouldn't be keeping this board in this case because of the drawbacks that I'm going to get to later. So I didn't bother fixing it. Next I passed the Molex fan cable through and connected it to the power supply. Because I had used the original HP screws to mount the HDD onto the cage, it didn't fit until I bent one part on the case. I connected the 8 pin power that the graphics card required. Next is the adapter cable that makes it possible to use a normal ATX PSU with this HP proprietary motherboards. I actually first got an incorrect cable which was meant for another HP PC. You should pay attention to the coloring of the wires because the cables are wired very differently. I compared the wiring on my adapter cable to the original PSU and it seemed correct. I recommend to check because one of the cables I ordered had the connector inverted and so it would have been incorrectly wired if I wouldn't have taken the wires out and put them in the correct positions. After the wiring looked correct, I just connected the 24 pin end of the adapter into the PSU's 24 pin cable. It took me a while to find the pin out of the power button and power LED and HDD LED, but eventually I found the correct info. I'll link that thread down in the description. After some cable management I managed to fit the side panel back on and after that I mounted the glass panel onto the other side. With this PC I could have made it look way better by using this universal IO shield but again I knew I wouldn't be keeping this PC together so I didn't bother to cut that. You can also buy a metallic IO cover for this motherboard from eBay I think if you care about that. Next to the drawbacks about case swapping this PC. Firstly, right after I switched the PSU on, all the RGB lights light up and the CPU fan and the case fans begin spinning despite the PC being off. As you can see here the graphics cards fans don't spin and begin spinning when I actually turn the PC on. So for some reason the CPU fan and all of the lights on the case 
will be lit all the time despite the PC being off. Second thing is this boot screen which you need to bypass every time when booting the PC by pressing F1. Because of the LEDs the PC will now pull a small amount of power from the wall despite being off. The only way you can prevent this is by turning the switch on the PSU off. You could possibly get around both of the drawbacks listed here by using the original PSU but then you wouldn't be able to use this power hungry GPU like RX480 which I'm using here. Moving to the benchmarks, the Fire Strike score looks like it should with this hardware and uh, as a first game I tested Apex Legends with the following settings. Everything else looks okay here but looking at the CPU temperature it's all the time hitting the maximum temperature for this CPU so that's not good at all. It looks like there's a problem with the way I mounted the cooler with the nuts. So maybe there's a big third drawback unfortunately with this case swap. Which is a shame because otherwise the game worked perfectly. With Kingdom Come Deliverance it was basically the same story. The game with the following settings worked perfectly but the CPU temperature was the bottleneck here and it probably throttled down all the time significantly lowering the FPS. With Cyberpunk 2077 here it was again the same story. The CPU temperatures were not under control at all. Previously when benchmarking Cyberpunk I've been told that I should try 16 gigs of RAM so I tried that here used to be sure but of course the problem still was the CPU temps so it didn't make a difference here. 